Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and all are welcome to this new broadcasting of The Power of Persevering Prayer. And today we're going to talk about with God's help. This is your pastor, Yeti. But before we start in prayer, I want to say that sometimes I mention that I'm traveling, and so the last time... Um, a day ago, I was flying back to California from Arizona. So, I am back in Anaheim with my dear friend and in California. So, I hope that we enjoy our time together because I believe that whatever happens, we are bound in the spirit. So, let us pray with each other and enjoy our time. Thank you, Father, for your ever presence in our life, for everything that you made it possible for us. You are our creator, and thank you that you gave us the possibilities to view our life, to open ourselves to more of you and help us with viewing our life that we see for new and look for new experiences in our life about our prayer life. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will provide us in the things we need to change, that our life will become more powerful and strong in you. In Jesus' name, amen. With God's help, as soon as a Christian becomes convinced of his, well, let me say, his lack in his uh, prayer life, a prayerless life, well, in this matter, his first thought is that he must begin to strive with God's help to gain the victory over it. But alas, he soon experiences that his striving is worth little and the discouraging thought comes over him like a wave that such a life is not for him. He cannot continue faithful. We must not comfort ourselves with the thought of standing in a right relationship to the Lord Jesus while, you know, we have a prayerless life. And because you must believe that even if your prayer is less, that prayer has a power in himself because it is God who works through that. And that is along with the whole church. Sometimes we hear the complaint about our feeble life, which makes us unfit to pray for ourselves, for the church or the missions, as we ought to be. But if we recognize in the first place that a right relationship to the Lord Jesus above all else includes prayer, with both the desire and power to pray according to God's will, then we have something which gives us the right to rejoice in Him and to rest in Him. So we have spoken of struggle, which will certainly result in a disappointment and discouragement. This is the effort made in our own strength. But there is another struggle which will certainly lead to victory. The scriptures leads, speaks of the good fight and faith. That is to say, a fight which springs from and is carried on my faith, we must get right conceptions about faith and stand fast in our faith. 
Jesus Christ is ever the author and finisher of life. This is when we come into right relationships with Him, that we can be sure of the help and power He bestows. Just then, as earnestly as we must in the first place say, do not strive in your own strength. Cast yourself at the feet of the Lord Jesus and wait upon Him in the sure confidence that He is with you and works in you. So do we, in the second place say, strive in prayer. Let faith fill your heart, so will you be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. An illustration will help us to understand this. A devoted Christian woman who conducted a large Bible class with zeal and success once came into trouble to her minister. In her earlier years, she had enjoyed much blessing in the inner chamber. In fellowship with the Lord and His Word. <coughs> But this has gradually been lost, and, to what she would, she could not get right. The Lord had blessed her work, but the joy had gone out of her life. The minister asked what she had done to regain the law's blessedness. I have done everything, said she, that I can think of, but all in vain. He then questioned her about her experience and connections with her conversion. She gave an immediate and clear answer. At first, I spared no pains in my attempt to become better and to free myself from sin, but it was all useless. At last, I began to understand that I must lay aside all my efforts and simply trust the Lord Jesus to bestow on me his life and peace, and he did it. Why then, said the minister, do you not try this again? As you go to your inner chamber, however cold and dark your heart may be, do not try in your own might to force yourself into the right attitude. Bow before him and tell him that he sees in what a sad state you are, that your only hope is in him. Trust him with a childlike trust to have mercy upon you and wait upon him. In such a trust, you are in a right relationship to him. You have nothing, he has everything. And sometimes later, she told the minister that his advice had helped her. She had learned that faith in the love of the Lord Jesus is the only method of getting into fellowship with God in prayer. Do you not begin to see, my beautiful people, that there are two kinds of warfare? The first, when we seek to conquer prayerlessness in our own strength. In that case, my advice to you is, give over your restlessness and effort. Fall helpless at the feet of the Lord Jesus. He will speak the word, and your soul will live. If you have done this, then second comes the message. This is but the beginning of everything. It will require deep earnestness and the exercise of all your power and a wakefulness at the entire heart, eager to detect the last black sliding. Above all, it will require a surrender to a life of self-sacrifice that God really desires to see in us and which He will work out for us. My beautiful people, here you have an answer. Sometimes we are so disappointed that we just give in, that we don't even have the courage to get up and come to our Creator and explain what is wrong 
Don't you think that he understands us? He is the one, like we can read in Psalm 139. He is the one who knows us completely. And so wherever you go, in the deepest darkness you feel in your life, or you feel a separation that you don't even experience God, cry out to him. He hear you. Trust in the Lord and don't lean on your own understanding. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yadi. I love you guys. Bye.